Hi, this is session 22 of Average Edge Course for Beginners. In this session, we will learn about reading enter from the request and passing it to the backend API service. This is continuation to our previous session. So, in case if you haven't watched our previous session, I would recommend you to watch before proceeding on this session. All right, let's move to any of the browser and log in into Apache and GUI. And after logging in AP proxies under development, which will populate all of the available AP proxies which we have created. All right, here if you could see AP proxy demo is the AP proxy which we have been working in our session so far. So let's give this in AP proxy in the session as well. And if you could navigate to the web tab, we have different flows for achieving different functionalities. We have discussed all these in our previous sessions. So in our previous session, we have discussed about using basic authentication policy and how can we encode the username and password from the request and how can we add that encoded value in the editor. So in this session, we will learn to pass that editor value to our backend endpoint. But yet, if you could see, this is the policy which is, you know, uh, forming that header, which is nothing but my API authorization header, which is forming that header. And yet, if you could see, SC validate user is the service caller policy, which is calling our backend API endpoint. All these we have discussed in the generating access token using password grant type session. If you haven't watched that session, I would recommend you to watch to get familiar with generating access tokens and using these policies. All right, so let's navigate to this service caller policy, which is calling our backend API. Right here, if you could see, it is passing username and password along with this header. Also, it is calling this particular endpoint. The login controller, validate user endpoint it is calling. So I could link it to that endpoint, which is this. So basically, we are validating username and password. If username and password matches with this value, we are returning OK. If not, then we are returning not found. All right, now let's try to do some modification in this endpoint to check for authorization enter. So let's try to read the authorization enter from the request. So I'm going to read it. So as my API authorization, so we can read it from the request request dot address dot try get value. So it will take two arguments. So first is key. So we have to provide the header key, and if the value Present, then we can read that value in this variable. So it takes in string values data type. So let's try to save that value in the variable. I can name this as my API authorization. And string value is present in Microsoft dot extension stock limit use. So let's have namespace. So in this line of code will say if the my API authorization at a person, this will say true. And if it is true, then the at value will be you know assigned to this variable. Now let's try to add the condition here. So what we are going to do is the header must be present along with the value and the value has to be the actual value. So how can we get that? Now let's try to get that value. We want to get that value. Let's trace a session. Let's start session let's try to provide the request from the postman 
and now we are getting this error because our endpoint is not running we haven't uh, run our endpoint so this is doing this error all right so now let's navigate to the trace window and here if you could see in the basic authentication policy and here if you could navigate to this header my api authorization we have this value so let's copy this value and paste it over here all right so basically what we are doing is so if the request has my api authorization header and if the value is equals to this along with the user credentials then we are returning okay else we are doing 404 all right now we will have to specify the header key value as well here so let's copy the key value from the policy and let's provide it here all right with these changes let's run our Dragon api let's press f5 which will run our api service and we would need to make our local host available to the internet so using ng-log we can do that in case if you haven't watched our session using ng-log to uh, make the local host server available to the internet i would recommend you to watch that session because apache edge cannot read the local server local host it can get in touch with the endpoint which is available on the internet all right so our application is being loading now so I can make this service all right now let's try to expose our local host to the internet with this command using ngrop let's copy the url so on this url our local host is exposed so let's Maybe get to develop tab and in service color policy, you would have to specify that URL. You need to specify that URL right here. All right, with these changes, let's save this. It is taking a while to save. All right, it is saved now. Now let's try to give the request from the postman and let's see whether we are able to generate access token properly. So still it says invalid username and password. Why is that? Let's save. All right, because we have added this condition now. So username and password is matching, but this header and the header value is not equal to this. That is the reason why it is getting failed. So if this is giving not false or not false, so here if you could see in the flow, if the response is not 200, then we have been calling our rise for policy, which is turning incorrect username and password. So if the response code is not equal to 200, then we are invoking this order hyphen invalid credentials policy. And if you could navigate to that policy, it says invalid username and password, invalid username or password. So that is the response we are getting here. Now you need to pass this my API authorization header to our backend endpoint. Before that, let's try to give the breakpoint here and let's enable trace to uh, identify whether, whether my API authorization is being passed or not. So before we do that, we need to do slight change in the service call policy, which is calling our backend API service. Here, if you could see, we are setting the headers. So as of now, we are setting only accept header so in the same way we will need to pass our my api authorization header as well so let's try to add another header here and the key for my header is my api authorization so let's provide that key name 
and the value for this my API authorization is coming from the header. So how can we read the value from the header? We can read that with the curly braces, single curly braces. We can read so value is present or value is coming from the request in the header part. So we can read that this way. Request dot header dot my API authorization. So this is called reading flow variable in the RPG policy. With these changes, let's try to save this as a new revision. All right, our new revision is saved. Let's select our new revision and deploy it on the test environment. New division is saved and deployed on the test environment. Now let's try to enable the trace so that we can see whether the header is being passed to the backend API service or not. So trace is enabled. Now let's try to provide the request from the postman tool. All right, so request is coming to our endpoint. So here, if you could see, so the value is true, and the value is coming from the header, and it says okay. So now we have passed the my API authorization header value to our backend API service, and since all these conditions are met, it is giving. OK, and we are able to generate access token, and that we can see in the trace window also. So, this is the service caller policy, which is calling our backend endpoint. And here, if you could see in the request headers, we have my API authorization header with the value. All right, on the other hand, if we try to pass some invalid. Username or password, we won't be able to generate the access token successfully because the value will not match. It will say true, but the value would be different. It will say 404 and it will say invalid username or password. On the other hand, if I try to provide the username and password properly, I will be able to generate access token successfully. All right, here, if you could see, if I pass the invalid username, still it says invalid username and password. So actually username and password is different. So we have been passing the username and password from the payload or a payload. And this username is password is to form the authorization header. So it is basically in this request, the authorization header is incorrect, basically not the username and password. But if username and password is correct, still it is telling invalid username and password. In this case, the friendly error message would be invalid authorization header or invalid my API authorization header that would be the appropriate error message to the client application but in this case also it is telling invalid username or password in our next session we will see how can we handle this that's it in this session thanks for watching and have a good one